Hey, I'm talking to Larry right here. And, Larry, you've got the distinction of, well, probably the only guy at the track here today that was actually at the very first national event right here in Great Bend back in the 50s. Yes, I was here in 1955 for the Saturday uh, qualifications and test and tune, whatever you called it back then. But as you know, the Sunday race was rained out. But uh, I, I was here for uh, Saturday, and then Saturday night they had the cars downtown Main Street all lined up to where wow. you could uh, look at them. It's all on the front of the square. It was down the middle of the street and on both sides. And it was every car that uh, was racing was there. It, it was quite a sight to see. Wow, that's pretty cool, putting the cars down on the Main Street area. You know, that event was the biggest event in the world at the time, and people came from all over the country to be here and to be part of that event. Yes, it's amazing. You think back in 55, the transportation that, uh, that we had back then, you weren't driving uh, 70 or 80 mile an hour like oh. we do now oh. and probably air conditioning wasn't too popular no. either no. but those uh, the racers had a lot of vision to drive from california uh, and the east coast uh, to come to great bend kansas to uh, to race their car that they had built themselves uh, i think that's an amazing part they not only uh, uh, drove them but they build them and uh, and they they just did everything and they didn't run to the store and buy everything if they needed something either made it went salvage yard and got a part but they made it work and there's a million stories of these guys coming across the country and then their car breaks and they go out to a junkyard and get an old motor or an engine block or something and make it work just so they can be at the event yes i uh, read a story about don gartlitz and he said uh, when you went to a town to race, he said you always got there early to find a good muffler shop because most of the frames were built out of exhaust tubing on the on the rail cars. That's true. <laughs> it would never pass tech nowadays, you know. But, hey, you had the opportunity to see all those cars. Was there one car that was your favorite out of all those? I think uh, my favorite would be the Bustle Bomb. It was a twin-engine car. It had, I believe it was an Oldsmobile in front and a Cadillac in back, and it was the first car to go 150 mile an hour for NHRA. Two motors, in, in, two motors in one car? Two motors. The front one uh, was the only one that was running when they took off. The, the back one was dead, but as soon as it moved just a few feet, why, it came to life, and it went like a rocket. Wow, and you were telling me that that car is in Don Gartlett's museum in Florida. Yeah, it's in Ocala, Florida. He has it down there. Uh, it was on display for a day or two uh, in 55 at the local Chevrolet Oldsmobile Cadillac dealership, and it drew, drew a lot of attention. Oh, all... I'll, I'll bet. Have you gone down to Florida to see it there? Uh, no, I haven't. I drove by it. Uh, it wasn't open. Everyone was in a hurry to get to Disneyland, and I, I couldn't uh, couldn't talking into stopping but uh, I talked to Don about every year at the SEMA show at Las Vegas and and one of the first things he always asked me is uh, how's the strip doing in Great Bend does he does he really yes huh he still talks about Great wow. Bend he wants to know uh, uh, what's going on with the track in Great Bend you know it's such a historic facility and it's in great shape we've been racing out here all weekend and it's a great place to race the people are nice the facility's nice I think it's one of those hidden gems that maybe a lot of people don't really know it exists. Oh, definitely. I just, uh, I'm really surprised that the city doesn't get behind it more. This is a wonderful attraction. It is the first race for, N the national race for NHRA. There's a lot of history here. I was also here last year to the drag tour that came through and talking to people that, <clears throat> that came here. They said that they'd always heard about the track, never had opportunity to, to come to a race, and they heard about this, and they just drove down to see what the track looked like and to see the, what the historical track was, just to be here and see it. You know, and I hear even to this day there's people in town that say, oh, I've never been to that drag strip. I know it. That's, uh, that's terrible. This, uh, this is a wonderful facility. The location is excellent. You know, basically it's in the center of the United States. Yeah. And uh, I, I'm just amazed of uh, 
of the cars that are here today from Hayes and Ellenwood and the little towns around of the quality of cars and there's some fast equipment here today. There's a lot of interest out there. Well, I got to tell you, you know, you just don't seem that old to have been around so long to have been to that race. Were you in diapers at that event? Because uh, you seem like an awfully good interview. Well, that's a good compliment. I was a sophomore in high school, just starting uh, to uh, get my uh, feet on the ground with driving and being able to go places. And uh, I lived uh, 15 miles west of here, out in the country. And uh, Great Bend was always a place that my parents did their shopping and so forth. And we came to town a lot. And, and uh I was always a car guy, still a car guy, and uh, it, it was just, uh, <clears throat> like I said, I could not believe it, of, of reading the magazines and then coming to Great Bend and seeing the people in person. And they were just as, they were just as common as, they, as the people are here today. You could talk to them, and, and uh, they, they would just tell you all about their car and so forth, and it, it was nice. Art Chrisman who made the first run down the strip. I, uh, I visit with him at the SEMA show when he's there, and he made the first pass. He had a nice car. Uh, it was kind of a copper-colored car. And, and some of them, was, racing was just kind of getting started for the NHRA, and, and some of them were maybe kind of what we call rat rods today. Right. They, uh, they didn't call them that then, though. They just called them cars. Hot rods. Yeah, they were hot rods. and. And, but they, uh, they were safe, and, and uh, they, they weren't uh, concerned about necessarily painting a, a good paint job on them. They just wanted to make them run, you yeah. know. It was all and, about speed. Yeah, it was all about speed. And, uh, but, yeah, it was, uh, this was the historic place for the, for the beginning of the Nationals. Well, I want to thank you for talking to me. It's an honor to have met you, and I, I just can't imagine what an impact a race like that would have had on a young kid just getting ready to drive, getting ready to get his license, and to be able to come out here and see all these, these well, they weren't even legends of drag racing yet because they hadn't become famous yet, but to see all these people that later on in life would become legends. Yes, to see what, uh, you know, like uh, Edelbrock and, and, uh, and people like that that, uh, you know, ended up, uh, with big companies making speed equipment and they were driving their own cars testing their own equipment and so forth and and uh, they just had a good business head on them and, and uh, uh, ended up with with good corporations good businesses and that's what's keeping the sport going today is their products designed and tested by them back in the 40s and 50s that's right well thanks for talking to me i appreciate it it's uh, great talking to you and uh, you know what? It's people like you that drag racing is all about. Well, thank you. Thank you. And I'm very honored to uh, be interviewed by you.